Hi everyone and welcome to Entrepreneurs Playing Games. My name is Amandine Flax and today I am here with Oliver Cushing, the founder and CEO of WriteDD. Um, today I would like to give a special welcome to everyone joining us from Periscope. So not only we are live on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch, but we are also live on Periscope. So if you're coming from there, come say hi on the, on the chat. And I would also like to invite everyone to just join the discussion. We are going to have a casual discussion. It's not even an interview. Uh, we are live because I want you to ask your own question. Let us know what you're working on, if you've been through the same thing. So please, whatever the platform you, you're using, uh, just join and uh, let us know what you have in mind. The agenda for today is quite straightforward. We are going to first talk a bit more about WriteDD and what Oliver is working on. Then we'll play some video games, that's the very fun part. And then we'll get back to Oliver, deep dive a bit more into his own experience of building his startup. And also we'll talk more about modern slavery and what's next for WriteDD. So, Oliver, are you ready? I'm ready, let's do it. Fantastic, great. Okay, so Oliver, um, can you tell me a bit more about what is Right DD? Let's just try, you know, let's just start on yeah. Good Foundation. So what are you working on? Sure, so Right DD is the modern slavery due diligence platform. Mm -hmm. So the background to this is that there are 16 million slaves, so that's 16 million victims of forced labor, of, of worst forms of child labor, um, working in global supply chains today. So they are making the things and delivering the services that we all consume. Um, that's clearly unacceptable and, and, and new laws are coming to force that require companies to, to deal with this. Um, and so what we do is we provide a, a due diligence platform mm -hmm. for um, assessing your suppliers as a company, assessing your suppliers for slavery risk. And then having identified high risk suppliers, we provide processes and a management system for uh, mitigating and, and managing that risk and for reporting as well. So it's, it's a business, you know, it's an enterprise software solution, it's a, a due diligence product, mm -hmm. um, which happens to tackle a major social issue. Major, indeed. Um, so I stalked you a bit online, I okay. had a look at your profiles and your experience, and I saw that you have been working in human rights for quite a long time also before. So what's the story behind the company? How did it start? It? Yeah, sure. So I. I um, really started my career as a mining and oil and gas journalist. So I okay. spent, yeah, so I had a little uh, a wrong turn before that. I actually started in commercial real estate and got, got made redundant during the economic crisis. But uh, after that, yeah, I spent four years oil and gas and mining journalist. So I worked um, uh, and lived in all around the world, um, in, in the likes of, of Ghana, in West Africa, Brazil. And I got really interested in uh, labor and community relations issues mm -hmm. you know and so if you're operating a mine in, in in west africa for instance the the local community and your workforce they really matter and they really matter in a way that can totally close down your business in an instant um and so it's really it's, it's kind of strange but it was mainly the, the mining guys who really taught me about I didn't understand it to be human rights at mm. that moment in time, but between the relationship between human rights and business. Um, so from there, I um, moved to a consultancy um, based out of Brussels um, in Belgium, where I, I then lived for three years. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, uh, they do some really fascinating stuff for a bunch of war crimes investigators. They do a lot of work on behalf of Western governments in, in places like Syria and Iraq. But I, I joined to help them build um, private sector practice. So I um, kind of worked on two ventures there. So I, firstly, we were doing consulting to mining and oil and gas mm -hmm. on human rights issues. And then secondly, I set up a subsidiary which audited armed private security companies for compliance with a US government mandated human rights management system. So, um, in it quite quite you know, much of this is kind of the underlying process is really quite boring um, but really you know, what that was about was there had been some really horrific human rights abuses mm -hmm. um, perpetrated by private security companies operating in, in the likes of Iraq um, and 
part of the response to this was to create a management system, so an operating system, which kind of embedded respect for human rights into their systems. So I was working on that and kind of, if you like, a bit of an, an entrepreneur setting up that subsidiary. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that we worked on that and then I, I, I increasingly came to the realisation that, so there's a kind of wide n- narrative here of laws changing and so forth we can perhaps come back yeah. to. But Yeah, I have some questions <laughs> about that, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> but, but really I kind of, my, my feeling was this, like, in order to end these human rights abuses in business supply chains Mm -hmm. we need companies to respect human rights which we can kind of go into again in depth and and and, and um, specifically engage in this process of due diligence Mm -hmm. but the problem is we're not achieving scale you know we as service providers are trying to do this as consultants as lawyers and it's just not viable we can't uh, tackle the problem at the scale that's Mm. necessary But this is a process and therefore to a large extent it can be automated. And so it was clear to me that there was both a social and a business opportunity to build scalable software solutions, which is what we're doing at Rights TV. Great. That's a, and I guess it also helps you get a better sense, but also get contact and relation with actors in place. Um, to start on a good foundation. Absolutely. So what are the um, main actors? Because um, I went onto your website also, and I have the feeling that it affects many different type of industries. Absolutely. You mentioned mining, but I think there are lots of industries affected. And um, who are the major actors that can actually make some changes um, in yeah. the space? And what is the what the uh, what the modern slavery looks like also today? Sure. So I think the yeah everyone can make a difference on this is, is the kind of short and, and, <laughs> uh, and cuddly answer, right? Um, but you know, we've got consumers, we've got government, we've got business, um, and then, of course, we've got you know, actual workers mm-hmm. themselves. Um, but so to answer your question about industry, there's a, co- there's a common assumption that this is a problem for a small handful of industries. You know, so maybe mining, um, apparel, clothing, you know, mm-hmm. we, this is what you hear about. And certainly informal mining and the clothing supply chains are have major problems. But really this is a problem that can affect any supply chain. And you know, we start, you start realizing that supply, every company is different, supply chains are huge. And so you're, you might be doing whatever, something super high tech, um, Maybe you're, you know, you're in, 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 in software, right? So mm. or you don't have a physical supply chain. You do. You know those hoodies with your logos on? Yeah. They're, they're there. Similarly, you know, who, who, who's cleaning your office space? So really, our, you know, our and every company, we'll come back to the laws again, but every company is expected to engage in a process of due diligence, right? So we, from the, from the onset, have said, this process needs to work across all industries and all companies yeah. and we are confident it can so you know, we're really there to serve this any company we're really we're really happy servicing like boring companies you know mm-hmm. chemicals companies or whatever like not the obvious ones not the brand names because that's where we affect the most mm. change you know it's if we only get scale if we can operate across industries yeah and I guess it's a start, right? Once some of the actors are already using a product and um, trying to change things at their own scale, then the bigger one are like, well, it works for them. So that means that we can also rely on that and it has a real impact. Absolutely. You know, for, from a consumer angle, you know, it's important to recognize that no supply chain can guarantee it's slavery free, right? That's mm. not what this is about. It's yeah. about ending slavery kind of a around the world mm. not kind of guaranteeing the perfect purity of a, a supply chain but yeah. every company can do something you know, they can engage in due diligence right which is proportionate to their size and their means and their, and their risk profile but every company can do that mm. and it's only by every company doing that that we can actually help end slavery and supply chains you know it, it's about everyone shining a light that's yeah. what's key yeah, I definitely get that. And before we get to play video games, I'd like to know, so what's your, what's your angle to approach that? Who are the first 
uh, maybe actors or industry that you want to tackle first because even though it can affect anyone and anyone can have an impact then well you're a business so you need to start somewhere and to have Absolutely. a target audience so who are you starting with yeah so really we've over the last year we've been um, you know, we built our minimum viable product, our MVP, and we, we've been testing it with paying clients. And we were really keen to make sure that even if they didn't pay a lot, companies did pay us something to ensure they actually engage with the process. We haven't done much in the way of outbound work at all to bring in those okay. clients. In fact, like we did one email campaign, mm -hmm. and that's basically it, and tried to... Which is really light. Things. Really light, and it didn't get anywhere, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. But what happened was we started getting inbound inquiries and referrals via our network. Um, and so, you know, we've, um, we've been testing with three paying clients and, and working with three paying clients over the course of this year. Um, and they've, they've come to us, um, they found us on the internet or through a partnership we have with a Japanese NGO. Um, and similarly, we've got a pipeline of prospects um, from around the world, um, and they've they've come to us. So that's not to say that we won't engage in outbound mm. work. Of course, we will. But we're really excited by firstly the fact that despite having basically done no SEO, virtually no content marketing, mm -hmm. people are finding us. Okay. So we're excited by that. We're also excited by the diversity of our base. So. I think from a kind of where do you start perspective, there is definitely a logic from a marketing perspective in focusing on one industry or mm -hmm. one country. And we, we may return to doing that. But really, the fact of the matter is that we need to demonstrate there is a big market out there. Yeah. Now, we've, of course, we've modelled our market and so forth. But the fact is we're getting Australian companies coming to us, like Japanese, mm -hmm. Irish, uh, American, Czech from all different industries, right? Which, which is more, you know, is clear evidence of diversity of market. Um, so yeah, we may, the kind of the, the, the narrowing down what you focus on um, from, a, from a marketing perspective definitely makes sense. But at the moment, while we've got companies coming to us, hmm. we're gonna take Let's them. just go with us and with yeah. them and, and see where it takes you. Yeah, yeah. Um, get that, especially as the, um, product is still in beta right mm -hmm. so it's still pilot phase where you're still finishing up um, for then approach more people Absolutely. great well I think now we, we get a better idea of what you're working on um, so let's play some video games cool all right while we play video games please everyone in the chat feel free to ask your question um, I will be passing them on to Oliver right after we play video game or may Maybe during the video game part, we'll see, depending on the question. So feel free to ask us anything. And now we're going to play Battle Block Theater. So it's a game that is quite nice. It wasn't the game I wanted to play initially. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I, because I told you I was terrible at computer games. So you, you no, got a it's, one. it's because <laughs> I, was, I was looking for a game that is a bit summer-ish vibes okay you know like something taking place at the beach or something um i don't know something with summer yeah um and i couldn't find anything or more exactly when i when i was finding some interesting things um it was just naked woman and adult games I was okay like, i can't find anything about you know a nice <laughs> gameplay at the beach something casual and 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 summertime and everything no way okay so um I decided to go for this one. Um, it has been created by the uh, creators of Castle Crusher, which is quite well known game. All right. it, but Castle Crusher is more about smashing things. All right. Um, this game is actually more of a puzzle game, so it's uh, slightly nicer. I don't want to always play a game where we're fighting, destroying things. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah. So, and you basically, you, like, for those of you not in the UK at the moment, we, we haven't really had a summer, so <laughs> uh, yeah, but we're getting a digital one now, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's not really about summer, but there is some rain at the beginning, so, oh, okay. so it, is about summer. it is summer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a uh, that's thing with London and the UK. Um, <laughs> summertime is it's nice when it happens. 
when it happens. Yeah. And I feel that summertime in the UK is actually more around May, June. Yeah. Rather yeah, than yeah. summer, summer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, do you play lots of uh, video game or have you played? I do not. Like, ever since when I was a kid, I remember this kind of dates me a bit, but playing uh, Wolfenstein 3D, Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah. And, and I remember like that that messed me up so much in terms of like I remember the like and the Prince of Persia as well. I remember like gates crushing down the noise and it would stick in my head for like days on end. Oh really? Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 like you'd be lying there in bed afterwards hearing it all. So after that I was like, you know, I don't think this is this is for yeah. me really. And so yeah, so uh, no, I'm not a big uh, computer games player, but, but keen to learn. To be honest, I try not to play um, some some kind of video games late at night, especially if I'm on my own, because yeah. otherwise I won't sleep. Like I have some games I really want to play, especially Alien Isolation, for example. Okay. But I don't want to play it on the evening, so I'm like, well, where, when am I going to play? Yeah. Um, I don't really know when to be in the game. Get so. up early. And we, we were saying, right, that you're, you've got an old uh, apartment here, and so there's yes. lots of creaking noises, which makes it a bit spooky. So oh, yeah. I, don't, with, I really yeah, don't need this. that yeah. for the spooky, so yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's launch a game. I'm going to put the story mode. Feel free to customize your prisoner. Uh, so we can have the small story. So can you press A? Yes. Great. So we can choose our color. What color do we do you want us to be? Let's let's go green. Green, green. Let's go green. Yeah. So if you just uh, move around with your um, D-pad, you can actually uh, change the uh, size of your yeah. Okay. Your face. Oh yeah. It's not okay. just a symbol, it's actually your face. What? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, but we're both, so I should really be uh, Well, you should be whatever you little, want. Uh, that little strange map, a little green fella. Okay, cool. great. Uh, okay, you just need to press A again, again, and again. Great. So we don't have the um, sound of the game. So I'm going to try to explain you the situation, All the introduction, right. the story mode. Um, but I might also pass it at some point because uh, <laughs> it's funny, they make some jokes and I won't be able to uh, reproduce the jokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shame. I know that's a shame, but uh, it's actually a very nice game. Like the, uh, the music and everything, it's really detailed, it's really cute and everything. And it's a bit sad and so, uh, kind of. So well, it had like a warning sign at, at the beginning about like being uh, of age of age appropriate, right? So. Yeah. So visually, I think it's okay. It's it's more about the jokes and uh, everything okay. to say. So basically, right here they are saying that. Um, you have a friend and uh, uh, he decided to go on a boat trip and basically your friend is this kind of guy that you want to follow everywhere. That you know, the kind of fancy guy, really friend and everything. And then, um, uh, I don't know what they're saying here, I can't remember what happened. Um, might meet some pirates, something like that, but you, it's going to be a, temp uh, a big storm happening and um, the, um, the boat is going to wreck. Right. Wow, okay. I'm spoiling it because it's not coming here, so I have no idea what it's saying right now. Which is the always the tricky part. Explaining the game. <laughs> this is good. Um, but that's a storm here. Okay, that looks brutal. Uh, yeah, we can we can see it. And what they say is a bit like you know, yeah, it's a bit savage, so yeah, okay. that's why. Yeah, yeah. But visually it's, it's not. a pirate story. My three year old nephew would love it. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe yeah. three years old is a bit... <laughs> bit too little. Hi, Eddie. Great to see you on the chat today. Eddie says the people in games are always so interesting. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. Yeah, I tried to find different type of game and not necessarily mainstream games. Yeah. Um, even though they are still mainstream, but... And to be honest, it's, it's quite hard to find games to players, local, new team. Um, it's not that easy. And one sort of simple. Yeah. Also, yes, exactly. Yeah. It has to be entry level. But generally, co op games are all not too hard. Okay. Like party games. Well, I'm pleased it's a team one, and therefore you can do like, it. You can be distracted. So yeah. <laughs> well, we have. To win together, so we don't have such a I'm wondering about the sound. I, I can kind of hear it from here. 
Um, so let me know if it's a bit too high um, on the stream. Uh, I don't really have a feedback right here. So, yeah. Okay, so I think we are going to play really soon now. It's a big storm going on. There. It was a big storm, yes. Um, and I think I skip. Okay, so that's us now. So we are the small characters, um, and our friend Chip is. Oh, I love the, uh, the fun. Yeah, I see all they did there. Fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Whoa. you jump with A. Okay. Um, you can do something with X. Kind of push things around. Oh yeah. What about Y and B? Um, well, B, you have oh, a frisbee. Which I just threw at you. And well, I just killed exploding. myself. Yeah, it's an exploding frisbee. Oh, so right. once you send it, it's kind of that, stuck that, somewhere. That's not very And fun. X, I don't know. I'm going to leave X. Well, it, I have it some doubts. weird face. I'm, I'm knowing some games, I'm wondering if it's not farting, and at some point it's farting too hard that X explodes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's my guess, but that's I it. don't know. Well, you just exploded. All yeah, over me, having farted. So I know it's. It. So. I guess that that's what it means, but I'm not sure. Maybe just vibrating. I, I just I haven't played too many video games. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, arrive in some kind of island, and there is a place we don't have to choice. We have to get in. Got it. Hmm. Maybe our friends came Ooh. here. Oh. And I think it's a no theater. That's so okay. That's why the name is uh, Battleground Theater. So we'll see. Okay. Keep, oh, I see. I keep on squatting down, right? Yeah. Oh. I think that there is a time that appears. Um, I think we have to do things quite to be quite coordinated. Um, when one of us reaches the uh, door, the other one has to follow in like a few seconds. Okay. So that's a tutorial mode. I just explained that you can double jump with A. Ah, oh, okay. So double A, double jump. Yeah, almost there. Really close. Yeah, alright. Uh, yeah, don't fold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, and um, Eddie says that the sound of the game is a bit loud. Well, I might try to just. Um, Making it slightly less loud um, because I know it can be annoying if, especially when we're playing, we might not um, we might not uh, speak too loud. So I'm just going to be annoying here. Yeah, mute it. Okay. Oh, I can actually do it directly there. So sorry for that, everyone. Just going back in a second. That should be better now. Okay, we're back. Cool. Great, so what do we have here? Right, that the security guys. All right. Um, I think they have one of our friends. They just oh, yeah, put a like hat on him. him. I don't know, it, it's a hat. I know, it's, well, I think that's, that doesn't look good. Yeah, it doesn't look good. I'm just gonna give him a sore head. But the security are cats, so. Okay. I don't know what I should be worried about. Oh, I think they got us. So I think we were worried we might have made some noise and they got us. So, where are we? I think we might be in some kind of a cell or something. Well, yes, as we as are now prisoners. So I hope you perform better than that last, that prisoner. last prisoner. Okay. Let's, so let's do that. So, we need to press X. X. You might need to, um, yeah, just go forward. X at the top. Oh, uh, Y. Uh, y, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, that's, that's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're in some kind of, uh, well, all theater room, so let's start with the first level. I mean, it would, should have been obvious to me because there is a Y floating yeah. above my head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see, it's it's easy game. Yeah. Okay, scene one. Let's see what kills us and what doesn't kill us. I need to take the gem. Generally, gems are okay. Cool. <laughs> Feeling it. Um, 
And I think water might not be, so let's just yeah. jump. Oh, we even have the tutorial, so that's great. RT is supposed to... RT. Hmm. Not retweet. Yeah, not retweet. Or Ash um, today. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but okay. I think we can help each other here. Surely, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. So try to jump, double jump, close to me, and I'm, I'm basically rain now. Wait. Giving you a hand, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I think those things are actually not bad. They explode, but then here, you can actually jump really, really high. Oh, right, I thought that was a uh, uh, lava or something. Me too, when I tried the game, and, um, and I realized nine. it wasn't the case. Okay. Yep, right. we're back. Okay. Oh, we just need to go into this. Okay, so I'm trying to do that. Go go uh, closer to the um, to the border near, near to the water. And I try to do up. Oh. I don't see what it's supposed to do. Uh does this crystal thing help at all? There's a little crystal thing up here. No, oh, that's just following us. Oh, okay, I see. So, okay, you have to jump and I have to hold the hand for you. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. yay. All right. Now, go, go, go. So, like a magic... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't jump over you. Okay. Oh, no. So, how does this work? Well, I think you need just to take a step forward, uh, backward and, and just... Um, oh, yeah, 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 break yeah. you. Yeah. There. No! <laughs> oh, sorry! No, so that was okay. fine. It, look, it was perfect baller. Uh, it worked. Move. It worked. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think the exit is right here. I'm just going to try to get the jam right before. Yeah. Nice. We so we did gems. the first level. Okay. Okay. That's interesting because I did it also before, just to see what it looks like before we play together. And um, it wasn't the same as well. Okay, so that's probably because some of this you need two people, right? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. Okay, and we've, I think we've been killed twice. Yes. Well, I've been killed twice. Yeah. Once by killing myself. Me too, I've been killed maybe three times. Okay, we're fine. But it's okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of game we can, you can actually die as many times as you want, so. Uh, maybe Get I, I need to give you a hand also. Like try... Ooh, okay. Oh, okay, so maybe we need to do that right here. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Oh, sorry, I pushed you away. <laughs> I'm such a. Uh, okay, Should I Should we try that. this side? We need to do it right here, I think. Uh, okay. So, what? Oh, right, okay, so you get, like, so. Yeah, so I go there, you go on the top on the other side. You need to jump, double jump. Yeah. yeah. And then. Jeez. Oh, it's too short. Um, oh, maybe we don't we, we don't need to go this way. Maybe we can just go on the. Oh left. yeah, because I think look, there's, I reckon there's a uh, something above us that we'll be able to go back to it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a, a thing up there. All right, should we do? Should we go to the left then? Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Okay. Let's try that again. Mm. Yeah, you're stuck on the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do okay. Uh, that's tricky. Maybe... Let's try this. Yes. Yeah, you got it. Okay. And um, now... Now, where do I go do, then? Do I run... No. So if I run over that... You'll be stuck on the side of the screen. Yeah. So, so maybe I've got to... I try something. No. Okay. Backflip back. Oh no, okay. So I need something so, above that I can help you with. Yes, you need to go next to, um, as close as possible to me without falling. Okay. And you need to push the uh, trigger right here. Alright. This one. And what's, just do it like that? Yeah. And and then you can you need to keep it pressed. And so you're basically um, training uh, your hands. Okay, cool. So I can then just do that. Yay. And yeah, you got me. Great. Sweet. Ooh, uh, I think it's going to reappear. You just need to wait a bit. Oh, okay, fine. Just kill myself. Yeah. It's a gem. 
It's interesting because, yeah, generally lava is not good for you. No. But here's good, so This, this stuff gives you wings, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, right, okay. Oh, sorry. So, we're Check going up here. Yes. And then, well, let's see. So I'll just wait for it to read. Yeah, I think that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah, a bit boring, but... Okay. Oh, I've seen this. That's quite funny. So we just need to uh, go on it and, and it just pushes us cool. really far away. Okay. I have no idea where we need to go now. It's, uh, uh, there's a crystal up there. Should we try for that? Yeah, I think so. But I think we need to go just like this. And, and then go on the top on the cloud. Okay. Oh yeah, got it. Okay, so now I think we opened the exit. So the thing is, okay. for what I understand, if we don't have any enough crystals, we can't open the, the exit. So right. we can see it, but we can take it. So was there one still down the lake? Um, down below there is nothing left, I mm. think. So I, I, we didn't do to go below, but on the cloud side. All right, so I come, come down with you. Yes. All right. Let's open the door. Whoa! Two. I think it's it's. We can actually fight it, can we? Yeah. I'm oh, just running away and then. then yeah, I got it. it. Well done. Poor <laughs> cat. Yeah, well, they're not really nice cats, so. No. What am I doing? I just can't. There we go. It's hard with two players. You don't. Sometimes I can't. I you don't... bounce off you, I think. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty poor excuse for me to <laughs> not, not be able to jump properly. That's okay. Okay. So then. Yeah, I think that's the thing. When you're when you're two, it's slightly more difficult because you are also destroying some blocks around okay. you, and so. Yeah. Oh, nice start! Push them off. Should yeah. Carry on. Especially on the water because the water is not just uh, tricky for us, but for them too. Yeah. I think we can. Send okay, them that soon. one just. Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that one just uh, got himself. I again punched you. Uh... Oh sh! Oops, that's sorry. okay. That's okay. And then I just oh, uh, you oh, died. Oh, I died dear. on. Uh, oh dear, I'm doing a lot of dying at the moment. That's Should we get okay. that crystal up there? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Try to get it. Okay. So I'm right. wondering if we if we should go up or down. I think both are fine. Crystal down there, but yeah. it's going to be pretty hot. Tricky. I have no idea how to get this one. I think we might. Um, if you want, we can go down and just try to get it from down. Like, I uh, uh, why I can't even get up there. Yeah, because I went down. Uh, um, okay, it, so the thing is, yeah, I know what it's like. So, so little, it, those, it's jetpacks. Ah, so, so we want those. If you need to go down to get. Uh, next to me. Okay. And then get the other jet back. Oops. Ooh, wait for that. Boom. And then get the jam over there. Uh. Well, you went too too high. <laughs> oh, I'm up. That's me. So yeah, I'm looking at the wrong you. one. Oh, I've, got, I've just gone back. I've gone all the way back again, eh? Yeah. But to be honest, it happens to me all the time. Uh, when I play with my partner, it's the worst. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not this one. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm. You're the. All right, we've got them. So what do we yeah. do now? You go up, but not too much on the side because the gem is in the uh, middle. Okay. All right. Whoa. Got it. Okay. It's hard to uh, to manage. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay. So now we can just uh, go up. Oh, maybe not. No, I think we're in the same place. Oh, you don't have a jetpack anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that. Oh, no, here we go. Plus, the jetpack doesn't last for very long. It's just a few seconds. Alright, so how, how do I fire the jetpack? Eight. 
Uh, I think it was A. I don't know why. I don't know why it doesn't work right now. There we go. Okay. I think I've run out again, haven't I? I don't know. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah. Oh, that's it. It's done now. Well, it's not because now I can't get up. You can still go up. Yeah, you can just double jump on this one, I think. No. I don't seem as good at jumping as you. Hmm. I can maybe put my hands like that to help out. That'd be great. No. Ah. It's really close. Yay! Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> um. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Wow, cool, that's good. That's bouncy, yeah. That is bouncy. Okay, and I think now I need to push you on the other side so you can get the gem. Okay, okay, so kind of sling me. Yeah. Yay! Hey. Get it! And then... Hmm. Uh, oh, there's one of those things, isn't it? Here, look. So okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I'll let, you go I'll let you get the gem. Yeah? Alright. Yeah. And I'm not going to. Uh... Oh, okay, oh, wow. so you're okay. there. Now I do this, right? Yes. I know, uh, um, no, that's no, the uh, trigger, trigger behind. Yeah. Cool. And then I can come here. Perfect. Oh, there is another gem. Yeah, yeah. But I just killed myself getting yeah, it. Yeah, you could have almost made it, but almost. <laughs> oh, there Yeah, you needed the double jump, I think. It's hard with the clouds, you don't really know where it starts and where it ends. Dear it's dear. okay. I, I told you. It's fine. <laughs> All I right. think most of the people don't have the time to just play video games no. anyway. No. It's so hard, you have already so many things to do. You know, hang out on Twitter and... Yeah. Uh, have no Bit of work occasionally. Yeah, occasionally, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I should come and help you rather than just... Well, it's okay. Reaching. All right. <laughs> uh, and we got boom. the exit right Yay. here. Great, it is says that the sound is better, so perfect. That's great. Boom. Um, it also changes from one game to another and from the um, first intro screen, so it's good to have someone that gives you some feedback on the sound quality and everything. It's so much helpful. Yeah. Eddie, have you played this game before? Oh, good question, yeah. I don't, I don't know if Eddie plays video game, actually. Okay. So, we finished the first level. That's cool. great. What about, do you want to continue a bit, or do you want to get back to questions and interviews? Should we have a little chat and then we can come back to it? We can do that yeah. also, yeah. If okay. that works. Yeah, um, we can make it work, I think. I'm just going to change the here and I'm just going to um, try to see if I can just remove this on the game so if we want to get back to it we can just do that afterwards. Yeah so now I think we don't hear the sound of the game anymore so that's great. Um, Eddie says that he hasn't played this game yet. Okay. Uh, he loves video games but um, he just doesn't have the time to play. No it was a lot hour. Yeah, it's so hard when you're building, especially when you're an entrepreneur um, and you're involved in so many things, you have the pressure to network, go to yeah. event, make it happen, and make it happen fast, and play video games doesn't really... Come into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, even though I think it's quite great for, even for mental health or for everything, I think it's, it can be yeah, um, yeah. relaxing. Relax. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and some people use it as uh, like team building basically as well, right? So, also, yeah. You know, it's definitely a thing. Or team uh, breaking. Or team breaking, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, sometimes I notice uh, guys like in other parts of my, like in our co working office, playing occasionally. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, yeah. Like screen slightly angled away, so you can't see them. <laughs> it's, it's a good way to have a small break, also. You have some time, you know, you get yourself into a fantasy world or whatever, yeah. and sometimes some game are not too time consuming, you can just play. Um, a few minutes here and there and um, yeah I think it, it's a good way to have a quick break and get yourself into something else yeah. without necessarily going too far away or anything yeah yeah absolutely um, okay great uh, once again if anyone has any question for Oliver please 
as your question in the chat i do have lots of questions as usual but uh, your question has a priority on mine so um, if you just want to ask anything, I'll make sure to ask your questions first, uh, or to fit it into mine, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, Oliver, we talked about uh, Riot CD, and I think we have now a better understanding of what you're building. Um, you mentioned that um, you're, you're, um, you have been lots of people coming to you, so that means that they are um, quite aware of the situation and they're looking for a solution. Um, but when you're talking to all the type of people, do you feel that you have to do lots of evangelization or do you think that it's a problem people get? People understand that it's something that needs to be fixed right now. I think people get it. You know, It's mm. clear that slavery is a bad thing. I think there's um, a, a misunderstanding, understandably, of what slavery is. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of tendency to um, assume that anything that is seen as kind of abusive or a bit exploitative is, is slavery so I you know, mm. sometimes get frustrated when I get people comparing their own job to being a slave or you're like oh, no see. it's not just, yeah. just don't say okay. that um, you know. but um, no I think people get it um, that it's a bad thing it's I think where the challenge is is not necessarily with companies but look we, we're in a kind of era where there's a lot of news about companies doing bad things mm -hmm. right and people but it's quite, myself included, often assume that's just noise. You know, it's like, you know, we hear these occasional stories and it doesn't mean anything. Mm. And so when I speak, you know, when I'm speaking to potential investors and, and kind of society at large, I guess, there's often a kind of assumption that it kind of like, it, yeah, it, do, it happens and then things move on and, and, you know, they get away with it. Maybe, you know, company mm. doing X bad thing gets away with it or doesn't change more importantly that's really what matters is change but actually now we're starting to see that it does matter right so mm. i think the strongest data point there is for this is um pwc do an annual survey of the 2000 largest companies in the world largest listed companies in the world and part of that survey is looking at why ceos get fired and over the last decade um, there's just been a total step change in why CEOs get fired. Mm -hmm. Today, forty or last year, forty percent of CEOs fired from the world's largest companies were fired for ethical reasons. Okay. You know, Ten years ago, so during the crisis and, and before that, it was uh, one in ten. Today, mm. it's four in ten. It's actually you're more likely to be fired for ethical, like ethical reasons, mm -hmm. for than for financial ones. Okay. So in amongst all that noise, and there is a lot, the fact is that management and companies are more do need to be more accountable. Mm. And actually, if you're looking for kind of preservation, kind of doing the right thing as a CEO is a very good way to preserve uh, your, your, your time in office. Okay. That's, that's interesting. Um, I feel that sometimes... When you hear this uh, big stories and the CEO is fired, I feel that you know the CEO is just one cover and it's just a person that has to take the uh, um, the blame because you have to blame someone and then firing the CEO might not change anything mm. uh, because it's about the practices and and the processes within the company. So the CEO is the person who is supposed to be in charge and, and the public face. So yeah. that's the person who takes the blame. Um, I think that's very true. Of course, you know for, for that much used adage of the buck stops here yeah. right you know they are the boss and therefore they have you know, they may be kind of sacrificial but they are the person who runs the company you know sure. they're held to account by the directors um and so you know, it, see the the boss needs to you know, those cultures and systems they're dictated by the boss you know they set the tone and therefore you know if you're if if you're a new CEO coming into a role and the previous CEO was mm -hmm. fired for X ethical mm. failure, um, you're going to be very cautious and sure. cognizant of the fact that you need to address you know those those risks yeah. that, uh, that occurred before. Mm. So um, you know if the CEOs, you're right, companies are more than just the CEO. Of course they are, mm -hmm. but if the CEO is being held to account, that tells you a lot. I um, just want to say hi, Druha. Druha, I'm really bad with names, but uh, hi. Yes, I do with the chat. So if you have questions for Oliver, 
you can add it here and I'll ask it. Um, but please uh, be nice because I, 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 can, I can see what you're uh, writing right here and um, this is not the vibe of this stream, so <laughs> please be nice. Um, okay, so that's, um, that's actually quite um, interesting and, and I think it leads me to my next questions about what people and what companies are legally obliged to do sure. and what are the, reper the repercussions if they don't um, follow the, the rules basically and is it something like um, modern slavery is it something that you have the same rule all over the world or also do you have some countries where um, because of the difference of legislation mm. you might have some abuse from other countries yeah absolutely so yeah modern slavery is uh, covers a number of um, forms of crime that are banned under international law and technically are illegal in every country, pretty much every country, there's a few exceptions. So the actual act of slavery, of enslaving someone or trafficking someone, that's illegal, right, mm. full stop. Yeah. And to be clear, we, you know, our, our customers are not companies at risk of doing that, of actually engaging in slavery, they're at risk of that occurring in their supply chains. Mm. So um, really what creates um, the market for us are laws in um, the UK, in new laws in Australia and the Netherlands and um, to a certain extent in America, um, which require certain companies to publish uh, modern slavery statements mm -hmm. every year, which um, lay out the steps they have taken to um, eliminate slavery in their supply chains and report on the due diligence. Mm -hmm. So this is totally really new. So the UK Modern Slavery Act is the oldest of, of, of the ones and it, it came into force in 2016, um, the actual reporting requirements. And um, it um, essentially, yeah, is the weakest of them in many ways. But so they have to publish a statement. Um, their government has certain abilities to enforce. It can take out injunctions and so forth against companies that fail to comply with it. It is, um, they have only just started doing any form, form okay. of enforcement, so naming and shaming. So we, we're just starting to see companies really taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. um, now there's a range of kind of penalties, like each law country is different. I think the strongest one is actually the new um, Dutch child um, labor due diligence law. Is which, this the one you mentioned on, on LinkedIn um, a few weeks ago? Yeah, okay. which is kind of the people are not registering it mm -hmm. um really because it's it's only just been passed it won't come in okay. force until next year but the penalties contained within that at, like for consistent failure are strong really strong so they they it's up to 10 percent of the company's um revenue can be fined and directors can be imprisoned so that's a lot um, you know, to put it into context, uh, for GDPR legislation, so the, across Europe, the, the laws regarding um, data management, mm -hmm. they contain um, a penalty of a maximum penalty of four percent of revenue. Um, and so, BA British Airways got fined one hundred and eighty-three million pounds a couple of weeks ago for under GDPR. Um, so it gives you an idea. The max in G GDPR is four percent. The Dutch law is ten percent. Okay. So we kind of it, it really it varies, but this is a from a kind of legal point of view, it's definitely a risk for companies. Mm. There's also more importantly the kind of reputational risk associated with it, and I think increasingly the risk from an employment perspective. You know, like people don't want to work for companies that are doing horrible things. Yeah. yeah. And I think and we're all a bit more aware issue. today, um, news are going faster, so uh, we are more and more looking at the ethics of the company. It's not just about what the company is doing financially uh, or who they're working with, but it's the entire ethic of the company. And that's, I think, people take way more in consideration than they used to before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and are those new... Um, so you mentioned that there are lots of new regulations. Do you feel that there is a big acceleration and this is why it is crucial for you to build this startup right now yeah. because of this acceleration of new legislation and, and people that need help to actually make it happen? Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. I mean, let's say this market didn't really exist a couple of years ago. I think the new law in, in, in Australia, um, which uh, requires companies to report annually and um, really only 
well, it only really came, started, kicked in in July. We're already seeing quite a lot of interest out there. Um, and so the time is really right um, or now for, for our product. Um, you know, we, we estimate approximately 45,000 companies already covered by these laws. And for new laws in the Netherlands, some potential law in, in, in uh, Finland will bring tens of thousands more into it. So really the timing is, is perfect and we need to um, you know, focus on developing our product out of, out of the, the alpha into what we aim to have by the early next year, which is a self-serve web app that mm-hmm. companies can use themselves. Yeah, because right now at the moment, the um, as we mentioned before, it's a it's a beta product. So people have to come to you, have a discussion, and then you launch a pilot together. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we've be basically cool. been using our processes, and del- and we have been delivering it to the customer, mm-hmm. yeah, which is brilliant. It's allowed us to we've done it very efficiently and kind of iterate the product. But the product. We're now confident in that process and now see how to build, like have confidence to build it out into absolutely web mm. app self serve. They can product. use it by themselves. Yeah. Um, okay, that's uh, that's very interesting because that's something I also felt on your website. When I went on your website, for sure I knew you were targeting modern slavery, but something that is very interesting is that when you look at your website, is definitely what comes up is that you're definitely building a, a tool and um, a risk management tool. And when we talk about risk management, we talk about data. Um, when we talk about data, we talk about big data. And mm-hmm. then we think immediately today about uh, machine learning and AI optimization yeah. with um, AI. And you also mentioned in one of your video AI. So um, is that really, are you really building this stack? And uh, um, is this what kind of differentiate you from all the risk management companies? Yeah, so I think you know, what matters um, from product differentiation in our space is mm-hmm. the process and the data. So we gather data from a very large array of sources, which is great. Um, and you know, we believe it to be industry leading. But more importantly, we actually aggregate, analyze, and, and, and interpret that data, right? Um, so, you know, because the, the risk is that you drown customers in data. You know, you imagine a, even a medium-sized company could have ten thousand suppliers mm-hmm. and hundreds of thousands of indirect yeah. suppliers, right? So the danger is you gather loads of data and you say, you know, let's just say you've got uh, an adverse media checking product, and it tells you like, oh, someone's talking about adverse media and mm-hmm. uh, about modern slavery or something in relation to this supplier. Great. You know, we know that so there's some noise there, but mm. what's it actually mean? And you're probably yeah. going to have it from thousands of sources at once. So we interpret, analyze, help companies understand the consequences of that of that of that traffic, of, of that of that um, yeah of that data. Mm-hmm. So kind of to answer your question about the, mef- the mechanisms we use to gather and analyze that data. So AI and so forth. Um, so Stephen, our COO, um, he's both a, a risk expert, expert, former risk officer at a large list company. He's also got a master's in neural networks, so, uh, okay. so AI. So you know, we, we have in the team people who, who really do get AI. Mm-hmm. But his mantra is, if we can do it using st- simple statistical analysis, not simple, but statistical analysis, let's do it. Yeah. Then, if that doesn't work, or we see an opportunity to kind of build on that, we'll use some form of machine learning. Mm-hmm. And so, there, there clearly is an opportunity to employ machine learning in our sector, and we see a route to doing it. It is not the core of our technology, okay. and it will probably never be the absolute core. You know, there's at the moment, obviously, there's something of a kind of I don't know about a bubble, but everything is being described as machine learning I, yes. I saw a newspaper which was machine learning in Hans and so forth you know like um, and most of the time it's not at all no, not even close not even close right you know um, so we you know yes we can use that technology we will use that te- technology it will always be to supplement and complement with not what we're doing mm-hmm. yeah okay and um, just to to uh to make sure I get that so your technology is definitely what differentiates you, but also can another risk management company 
um, decide just to focus also on uh, modern slavery and immediately just push you out. Takes out the market. Yeah. yeah. The fact that you're a small startup facing yeah. and, and being in the competition with those big firms. Mm. So I think, yeah, of course, there's in any technology, it can be copied sure. or, or it can be, you know, it can be um, someone else can do it themselves. I think there's two key points here. Maybe there's more. Um, firstly, when we say risk management, there's a big differentiator between what we do in the human rights space mm -hmm. and conventional corporate risk management. And this is something that is happily ignored by risk management companies because perhaps they haven't read the underlying documents. Yeah. But companies under the UN guiding principles on business and human rights, which is kind of an international agreement mm -hmm. um, or kind of consensus document, that document defines this process of human rights due diligence that Rights DD is built on. And um, core to that is, is the concept of assessing risk to rights holders, to actual people, in our case workers in supply chains, not to the company. Mm. And so you know, that's the absolute foundational principle of this. And so that's why it's hard to kind of just add a module to a risk management product. I see. That does what we do. Now you can do it and you know, claim it, it works. Fine, yeah. yeah, but it, it, it's because you're th looking at risk to two separate separate en uh, entities. There may be some correlation, but that's not the same as actually doing the process properly. So, so you know, conventional risk management, I don't consider appropriate for for, for challenge at mm -hmm. hand. I think you know, what what do we have that a a, a very large um, company doesn't have? is we're domain experts. We've done yeah. this both as consultants, as in-house. Um, we're totally focused on this. We're motivated by this. This is not like a little bolt on yeah. like, oh, let's sell a, a sideline in modern slavery because there's some laws here. We're motivated by the underlying problem, mm -hmm. but we're business people. We've all yeah. worked all our lives in business or careers in business. We want to help companies do this properly. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I love that. And actually, I'd like to now focus more on the uh, business aspect um, yeah. also. Uh, so you're still a young startup. Um, for what I've seen, you have raised your seed round um, not long ago. I think it was about 100k. We, well, so we haven't really raised um, a seed round as such. Okay. What we've been, so we went through an accelerator, so we had a little yes. bit of investment from them. And then we've been good at securing grants and prize money. Mm -hmm. So with the team um, still own the vast majority of the company, so there's been very okay. little dilution. Um, we are, well, we're taking a bit more investment at the moment. Um, okay. But yeah, we're a slightly unusual story. In the, so we're not yeah. having a big round and closing the big round and then moving to the next step. And I mean, we will do that. Mm -hmm. But so far we've taken, yeah, we did Bethnal Green Ventures, which yes. is a tech for good accelerator. That's we, are doing amazingly, an amazing job in the impact investment space brilliant. and just uh, the accelerator, but also all the communities they're building around tech for good in London. If, if anyone is interested in tech for good, check out Bethnal Green Ventures, yeah. they're doing really great. Yeah, absolutely. And they've actually, they're, kind of like they've, they're trying to spread that message around the world. So there's... Uh, there's meetup communities. Mm -hmm. I definitely know in Finland and, and oh, across really? across Europe, um, like Tech for Good. So um, yeah, they really they were been really great for us. Like they, we went through it a year ago. We're still slightly over a year ago. Mm -hmm. We're still regular contact with them. They really care. Um, you know, I'm not certain about how large the kind of genuine impact investing scene is yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still a little bit skeptical about it. But these guys, Bethnal Green Ventures, they care. You know, they are impact first, but very, very business minded. And then we've, yeah, we've taken grants as well from okay. a couple of institutions. So, what is the composition of the team right now? You mentioned that you have a COO, but also, for what I kind of understood online, you are also a sort of founder who then hired a few people to join you. Is it, is it correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, kind of started up my own and did try the whole kind of finding co-founders yeah. didn't big game yeah <laughs> and some of it is literally a game right yeah. you know, it's basically dating but um it didn't really like we kind of had a go at that with a couple of co-founders didn't really work mm -hmm. out um went back to just doing it on my own um and then 
um, yeah, secured some grant funding, which allowed me to hire some people. But it was it, that kind of makes it sound like that it was just the money. It wasn't because both Rachel and Stephen, mm. who've joined the company at that point, uh, they definitely weren't doing it for the money, right? Sure. It was fairly. Um, we were still fairly poorly paid, it has to be yeah. said. Um, so we you know what we we've worked together now for just over a year and so Stephen and rachel are significant shareholders in the company and you know like are enfranchised but really what i've realized is when you're when you've got a social mission when you've got a genuine potential for impact you can recruit phenomenal people yeah. and so yeah there's four of us now mm-hmm. all Obviously, everyone says their teams are amazing, right? <laughs> these guys really are, yes. and, and we really work very well together. But yeah, it's really that kind of guiding star for, of, of what we're doing mm-hmm. and, and the potential that exists um, that really unites us and allows us to focus on, on, on building the company. And what's the next step now? Are you looking to hire more people in the coming months? Or what is your timeline also for your yeah. product? Yeah, so we're basically... So in so in terms of product, we're um, working to launch actually a, 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 the first part of our product as a free offering in the first instance, in okay. hopefully by October, mm-hmm. um, and through the rest of this year and early into next year, building the rest of the product while still building um, you know, servicing clients and bringing in more clients, but delivering to them in a more and more automated mm-hmm. way. So yeah, we're not kind of desperately trying to prove traction but we'll carry on bringing in new clients through through the next six months we are um yeah we've just taking some more money in investment but not as a, a round for okay. asas so um effectively a convertible note mm-hmm. and we will um likely raise a, a larger round like a still a pre-seed round yeah. in either autumn um, or early next year. Okay. So yeah, we're not we're not kind of in full on investment mode at the moment, but that, there's always conversations ongoing. So yeah, uh, it's your kind of classic build product, ship, yes, and of course actually bring in the funding to do that. But we're, sure. we're, we're it's, good, it's, you know we're finding revenue. the balance and the right timeline to get everything yeah. done together. Absolutely, yeah. and that's the challenge. I mean, particularly the the investment is is extremely time consuming. Was it hard for you um, to raise, even if it's not a seed run or pre-seed, but to raise the money you have raised until now? Looking at the fact that you're a solo founder and also um, you have the image of, of Tech for Good startup, even yeah. though you are, um, I think in my opinion, before anything else, you are a risk management tool. For many people, you might just be a Tech for Good startup. So was it really hard to raise this first money? Yeah, so... No, because the money the grants we've taken are specifically because we okay. are pursuing a social impact purpose. I think there's a wider challenge um, from an investor investment perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, firstly, I think there is there is a bit of a challenge ra- raising that kind of pre-seed, so hundreds of thousands, um, just generally in the yeah. UK. Um, I'm sure, everywhere, but, uh, but definitely in the UK. Secondly, from the social impact perspective, there is, yeah, there is definitely, I think, among some investors, a bit of a perception that, like, we're a charity, mm. or that this social purpose will is not um, consistent with raising, uh, with actually being a profitable business and, and growing fast. Um, and so you, to a certain extent you kind of fall into this slightly weird gap um, you know, what I you know, the message I try and get out to investors is firstly just look at our market you know it's big look at you know, we're a revenue generating company not loads but we're generating revenue from large Japanese businesses for mm-hmm. instance if there is a market out here um, and don't think about social impact as a a risk think of it, it as an opportunity it means that we really are united around a purpose yeah and that's you, know, you won't generate financial returns until you're, you're delivering on a purpose and like going back to that point you really can it opens a lot of doors you know having a mission it, it really allows sure. you to have conversations that you couldn't have if you're just mm. i don't know making pieces get to someone's door 10 seconds quicker and 
it allows you to recruit fantastic people. Um, but yeah, but the investment thing is, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's a learning process for me. And um, yeah, one, it's very easy to kind of explain in a way why you have or haven't achieved things on kind of generic factors like sure. the fact with social impact. So I don't want to go too much down kind of that blaming it route, but... Um, no, sure, yeah, but it's, it's about your own experience and what yeah. you've seen. We, we're not definitely trying to generalize anything, but no. yeah, that's interesting to see. Um, there are many uh, well situations where you have this kind of uh, conflicting feedback where you have lots of people you said that it's a big door opener and yeah. and you kind of have lots of new conversation because you have an impact but in the same time you have some doors that are maybe a bit harder to kick yeah. because of that so very interesting um just want to say hi to y three 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 sis i don't know how to say that but uh, welcome. The interview is about Oliver and his startup, Rights DD. Um, I put the link in the uh, chat. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, check out his website. We are talking about uh, modern slavery and risk management tool, which is the topic of the uh, startup Oliver is building. So you have, if you have questions for him, just ask it and uh, we keep an eye on the chat. Um, I just want to uh, to follow up on that point. I feel that also there is a slightly more awareness about building a company, uh, a profitable business, and having a mission. I yeah. had a few months ago um, the founders of uh, Deep Branch Biotech, mm -hmm. and they are in in the same situation. And that I was so impressed to see how business driven they were, yeah. and um, and and that I loved about about the business also, and this. Brings me to a question I received on Twitter yesterday to ask you. Cool. Um, someone asked me about the balance in terms of your image as a startup. Um, how do you balance that? Um, because you want to highlight your mission because that's what drives you, but in the same time you want to be seen as a profitable business and a potential business, but as a business. Yeah. Uh, do you have some tip tricks to balance yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, still learning obviously I, I guess like all communication it's about tailoring your message to your audience mm -hmm. um, and so yeah I, I think I naturally talk um, more about one side than the other to depending on the, the person sure. in, in, I'm speaking to the weird thing is this I don't feel the need to moderate my conversation and my talking about the message with clients and prospective clients okay. they get it okay you know it's really not hard for people who work in a company to get on board with the idea that they want to help address these sort of modern slavery risks in their supply chain. It doesn't mean that they're going to close down the business or anything like that, but they can get on board with it. Yeah. I've never had a conversation with a client or prospective client where we're not on the same wavelength. It's Which is with a big the, thing because yeah. for a startup, there are always some people who are just like, "Well, I don't understand why I need you." So of course, it's a big no. now you can have a conversation about you know, from them whether it's right to be using a startup or mm. using a big brand consultancy. You know, which is a classic. You know, do you buy from IBM or the startup yeah. conundrum or startups app? But the actual problem and our approach to it and our mission, mm -hmm. there's never. It's just. It just comes naturally. That's part, naturally part of the conversation. I've never seen it as a problem. Where you have to, you know, where I find myself maybe wrongly, mm -hmm. um, kind of trying to strike a, more of a, a like, not to talk about that and more talk about the business is with investors. Okay. Yeah, and I think that tells you something. That you know, it's ultimately it's the clients. You know, the business is built on clients, yeah. and there's absolutely no problem so far in that regard. Okay. That's a, well, I guess that answers your question. Um, yeah. Uh, also, you mentioned earlier the fact that having a mission um, also helped you hire lots of uh, very passionate people and fantastic talents. Do you feel that there is a big change in terms of the internal culture, the company culture, when you're working with people um, with the same common mission? Or um, do you think it's exactly the same as any kind of tech startup? So, um, I, I mean, obviously limited experience kind of looking in you know, through my career. Um, sure. I, I, no, I think it matters. I think having a mission really matters. Mm. And I have worked in companies where there is a kind of disdain for the concept of the mission. 
okay. um, or values, mm -hmm. and it's really misplaced, you know, because things turn toxic quickly. Yeah. So I've seen that. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably, you know, looking at other tech startups, and many of them are, I know, are mission driven anyway, and I just see they do seem to be happier and more. Uh, there's more common ground in those teams um, than sometimes you can see, you know, just looking over over the table. Yeah. Um, but it's not a scientific sample, right? Sure. Um, you know, yeah. Have you done anything to help build this uh, this culture, or did it come just naturally because of the people you hired and just? It's funny when it. so when the when we grew the team um, out, we sat down and we. Yeah, I was like, look, we need to define, reassess and confirm our mission. You know, we define our mission together mm -hmm. as a team and then look at the culture as well and, and try and create some values mm -hmm. there. And we, and I say we, but it was actually, I think, Rachel who nailed exactly what our mission was, um, which is to empower companies to tackle modern slavery. And that was, you know, we did that together. It was pretty clear what we were doing. Um, And if, yeah, we, we did that as a team. We even went on then to write that, that mission into our Articles of Association as a purpose clause, mm -hmm. which sits uh, alongside our, our duty to deliver value to shareholders mm -hmm. as an equal, um, equally okay. important requirement. We said, you know, let's leave, ended up signing, let's leave the kind of the values and the, uh, the culture side of things until you know, a bit later down yeah. the line. Maybe we need to revisit them, but reality is it's just never it's it's not being a problem so far sure. the need, you know there's not been a need to codify it so far but it's pretty clear like how we treat each other mm. um you know there is a, a culture and but, you also al already have just by the nature of the of the business you have already have some al alignment in terms of values right? correct mm. you know you, you're not yeah exactly exactly that you know there's n you're not going to come and work for us if you are utterly cutthroat you know, yeah. it's just not that sort of sure. atmosphere and not that sort of mission um do you feel that the fact that we're based in london we might be um not biased but just have a certain angle or, or more openness than in other countries do you think that you could have built the same business um in other place maybe in europe or in the mm. us or in other place in the world in the same way yeah um be clear i think we are in europe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> whatever whatever the political uh trajectory you know we are part of europe here yes. um so yeah i mean i've worked in nine countries um not in tech um, okay. as we said and i would say britain is well london is uh you know it's definitely a fantastic place to build business yes. you know there's a, a a i think fundamentally i would say there's there's good bureaucracy here you know mm -hmm. very of course we've got rules we've got processes yeah. but it works it's quite accessible and that's really important you know if you're spending all your time uh you know trying to deal with red tape it, it can really it can kind of kill you basically yes um i think here in um my kind of running assumption here in london is it's a fantastic place to build this business because you've got a real diversity of of companies and prospective clients Um, whereas, you know, I guess if you compare that to Silicon Valley, for instance, mm -hmm. it's mainly technology, not exclusively mainly technology. So as a company, being in London is great because you've got a wide, diverse industry, uh, mm -hmm. um, kind of range of industries here. That being said, we aren't actually selling to any British companies. Um, sure. we're, we're selling internationally at the moment, but obviously there. I think, um, you know, again, in London, you've got a massive and very diverse um set of skills and talents and I think again that the fact that people have worked in different industries is, is an asset um, but you know there's doubtless challenges here at the moment um, you know for, for, for while nothing has actually changed in relation to Brexit you know for the same things everything remains the same hmm. it's unquestionably a, um, a negative vibe yeah. and um, you know I do know people who have decided to move home out of the UK not just because of Brexit but it's been a factor so we have to be careful to defend you can't you imagine know, how many living drinks party have been invited to yeah. over the past few months it's just crazy I feel that most of the people I know have been coming home exactly even though when people ask me if I go home I'm like yeah to my home in London yeah <laughs> I don't feel that my home country is necessarily my home yeah but uh, yeah I feel that 
with the big risk and the big change that we've seen so far is uh, linked to uncertainty. So some decisions are made because they don't know exactly um, what's going to happen, what's going to be the new rules, will people be able to hire the talents they want um, in the coming months. So I think, especially for, for startups, when you have the choice, sometimes this uh, uncertainty um, has been put into balance yeah. um, as a negative point. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's 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 uh, challenging in some ways, but I do you know the message to people um, who are able at the moment, you know, for, from the rest of the EU to if they're looking to move to the UK, is you can still do it, and you know it's a great time to do it, and it's still a very open country, and there's a lot of opportunity here. So yeah, look beyond the noise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I I love the I love the country and, and London especially. I'm definitely not looking to move out. Yeah. Uh, but for sure, being involved in the sort of scene, you see uh, some small changes and some yeah. impact um, and some questions that are not answered. That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, okay. And you mentioned also earlier that um, what you think is is kind of missing is to have some support on the pre seed aspect, like when you're. F- raised your first few 100k mm. uh, what we call generally the uh, friends and family round yeah. even though you have lots of grants that are taking consideration and and quite often no money from friends and family but more um, some people you manage to convince or, or angels or else mm. so you think that you, you, we can improve this uh, this stage do you think that it's uh, it's hard for startup at this stage I think so. Look, I'm sure it's it's hard for startups at every stage, for right? <laughs> that's so, the truth. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> and so it just so happens that that's the stage we're at, right? And um, what what? So in the UK, we've got a scheme called SEIS, which yes. gives extremely, as you know, like extremely generous tax breaks to people who invest via it. Um, and I do find it slightly to the extent that if the, the investment fails, you could get seventy five percent of your money back which is, is really de-risking it. And I, I do think that there's, there's not quite an appreciation that you get that tax break because you're expected to invest in high-risk propositions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's painting a really general picture here. But you, know, you can write down 75% of your, return, of your loss and get your upside totally tax-free. That, the government gives that as an opportunity because it's risky. You know, and so, so I think there's perhaps a bit of a challenge in that space, but we're lucky to have that. So I, I, can't, yeah, I can't. It's just anecdotal, and, and I definitely don't want to turn, turn this into a conversation <laughs> about Brexit because we're sick of it. But, yeah. but like, um, I have been told that early stage investment is down radically in the last couple of years. I don't, I haven't got the data myself, but by kind of forty percent. Um, Even yeah. though, if you look at the uh, either UK or European. Uh, figures in terms of uh, global investment, global um, VC, it is up yeah. um, as everywhere else in Europe. But uh, what is interesting is to see not just the numbers, because you have some big companies that are actually are pushing the number up. Yeah. Um, so what is more interesting, I feel, is to get a sense um, of what's going on for entrepreneurs mm-hmm. at their own stage. Uh, and that's why also I launched this yeah. uh, stream and, and this time of new format, because um, I think it's it's more important to get a sense of what's going on when you ask the people that are really on it right now Absolutely, and just yeah. trying to make their way. <laughs> and it's cool, you know. That's I think that's a massive advantage you have in um, in a kind of in an ecosystem city like London and, mm-hmm. and, and I think increasingly Paris and, and Berlin is, you know. I, I moved back to the UK. I didn't know anyone in the tech scene. Now I have like. Um, a brilliant network of, of friends in, yes. in startup world and so you know it's very open and you can meet people and they can give you advice they can tell you like who's got money like which funds got money what do they look for so forth and that's what you know I do uh, like and, and, and people reach out to me in a similar way mm-hmm. and we, we talk about this with you know, a, 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 you know what the scene is at yeah. this moment in time that's the beauty of London. That's what I love when I moved here, that the community aspect and yeah. the fact that you get to know the people really quickly, you just go to a few events and you get to see the same faces and you have the opportunity to really create deep relations with people. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great. Um, so we've been talking for quite a while now. It's, uh, it's almost noon. 
I just want to say hi to Ramahi. Ramahi. Hey. Um, the name of the company is Rights DD. I think it's in the name of the stream, um, especially as you're watching from Twitch. So yeah, it's in the name uh, um, of the stream. Um, check out the website. We just had a fantastic discussion with Oliver. We are starting to wrap up right now, so you might arrive a bit late, but um, the video will be available in the coming days on YouTube. So check it out if you want to see more of our, our discussion today. So before we wrap up, do you have any uh, tip or anything um, for early stage entrepreneurs or maybe communities or things that have really been helping you so far? Yeah, I think um, so definitely going over like if you're a social mission um, or a social impact or environmental impact company, definitely look at uh, the Tech for Good movement yes. um, and, and, and Bethnal Green Ventures if you're looking for an accelerator. Um, I think um, in terms of fundraising, you know, mm -hmm. we've talked primarily about investment, but you should really be aware that there are other ways to get money um, and support. So, you know, grants, um, I'd really recommend that going for grants, but really thinking carefully about whether it's the right grant for you and whether you, or more importantly, whether you're the right organization for that grant giver. Um, but there is, you know, there's other money out there and, and they can, sometimes that comes with support and expertise as well, mm -hmm. which is really helpful. Um, so yeah, kind of look at that. Um, yeah, in terms of community, you know, you just don't be afraid, you know, you can enter and, and build relationships quickly. Yeah. Um, and, and so that kind of speaks both to the, the startup um, landscape and then also business as well you know like it's actually surprising how quickly open doors open to you um, yeah I would even add to that uh, don't be afraid to also open up on your ideas um, some people especially first-time founders sometimes go to an event and say oh yeah I have a great idea for something but I don't want to tell you what yeah, it is yeah. or what space it is for and you're like well okay stay on your own but you're yeah. not going to get anything from me if you don't open up a bit yeah. uh, people are not here to steal ideas um, and that's a great way to just get feedback also brainstorm with people Absolutely. and uh, and once you hear some feedback all over again after a while you think oh well maybe if everyone thinks this way maybe i should maybe i don't know improve the way i explain this or think about how Absolutely. could improve yeah and i'd say the same with uh, clients and investors um, or even you know, we have lots of conversations with uh, I, I guess companies you could describe as frenemies you know they're mm -hmm. like they are potentially a competitor but they're also a yeah. partner and so obviously you don't want to be you know, emailing your code to them um, but you be open with them you know mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's the way forward um, because really uh, it's the execution that is hard not mm -hmm. the ideas Sure, yeah. and, and then everyone at some point buys out, and, and even if at some point you are kind of in competition into something, well, your main core product uh, might be completely different at the end and target different type of audiences. So if you have, if you if you're evolving the same space, it's always worth just chatting with the people involved. Totally. Great. Where can we find you? Um, online, offline? Do you, are you going to some specific event soon? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm yeah. So online at our website, writesdd, writesdd.com. Um, also, you'll find me. I'm more on LinkedIn than uh, mainly. So Oliver Cushing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on Twitter at writesdd. Um, in terms of events, um, I'm trying to think, I don't think we have anything lined up particularly at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, regularly, um, well, if you're in America, we're going to SOCAP um, in San Francisco in October, the impact investing um, events are there. But yeah, just find me on LinkedIn or uh, email me, um, uh, yeah, info at rightstd.com and uh, yeah, happy to talk. Fantastic. Well, for my part, I am more of a Twitter person. Yeah. So my DM are open if you have question, um, if for some reason you're going to miss the next stream and have question for the guest, or if you just want to share any suggestions or anything, um, feel free to drop me a line. I quite often answer, unless it is a bit scammy or a bit weird, but otherwise... And be nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be nice, and uh, I should answer. <laughs> um, 
Also, I just want to say hi and a thank you, a big thank you to Ramahi, um, who says that the channel deserves millions plus followers because you're proving us live interview with successful entrepreneurs. Um, thank you very much. I'm not taking your next question because we are reaching the end of the interview, but that is really, uh, that means a lot to me because we are now at the eighth interview and um, well, it doesn't look like a lot yet, but uh, I'm learning so much and yeah. I see that people are more and more interested and have quite often very interesting questions. Um, so I just love seeing people sharing and opening up about their own experience and having more people understanding that, yeah, I can definitely relate to this. So love that. Awesome. Um, so just so you know, the next stream will be in two weeks. We are going to talk about eSport and blockchain. Um, so I'm going to announce the name of our guest really soon. Um, certainly first on Twitter. So um, follow us there. Um, my name and my handle are a bit everywhere, I think, on, on all the uh, channels. So you can find it easily. Also, the video will be on YouTube in the coming days. I'm just going to do a small few edits and then it will be available there. So please consider having a look first um, giving a leaving a like or even subscribe to youtube it's a great way to see um, people's interest and also to help spread the word so um, thank you very much to everyone i wish you all a fantastic weekend i don't know if the weather is great here um those days it's not really good so i think i'm just going to stay home and play video games but i wish you all a fantastic weekend if you play no man's sky well Good luck. Uh, <laughs> I tried yesterday and yeah, lots of bugs. Um, so good luck with that. And uh, I hope to see you all in uh, two weeks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys.